cross marketing. We're live. Huh? We're live. Oh. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, we are live, apparently. Can I put this in the envelope? I, this is an expensive yeah, thing. Yeah, put it in the envelope. Yeah. Don't Just give me a sec. Just hold on tight. Oh, my God. I might be back. So, uh, welcome. We are apparently live. It's Thursday night at 5.30. I don't have a weird mask on or anything. So, um, yeah. Uh, Jenna, could you move your head just a little that way before I go blind from the reflection off that car out there? Thank yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. Oh, Thank geez. you. Um, so welcome to our kitchen. It's Thursday night at 530. We're here in well season. I'm Angie. This is Dennis. I missed you last week. What did I miss while I was gone? Um, what did we do last week? I have no idea. You and Michelle were cooking oh, with yeah, morels. Yeah, we, ate, we ate morels until we just came out of our ears. And that was a really good episode, too. Just, uh, I love eating a morella pound at a time. It's just uh, it's fun <laughs> to do. Uh, we ma I made a uh, French omelet. Um, no expense spared while I was out of town, which is how it usually goes. I have a debit card, and I, uh, <laughs> and I uh, yeah, just, just. Uh. But it was good. The it was excellent. Was no, uh, thanks to David. He just dropped on some kick-ass morels. Uh, we made some... Um, what the hell is happening here? So, Why is there a popsicle in my drink? This is our new sangria. This is what I spent almost all of today doing for some bizarre reason when I wasn't making 8 million charcuterie you, you, you boards. Got, you got to work a bit faster. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to move faster. Oh, don't even start with me, mister. <laughs> <laughs> so these are our brand new yes. sangria I'm, I'm, popsicles. I'm just kidding. I know what it is, actually. Yeah, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's watched me make hundreds of them yeah. in the last few days. So these, if you're new to Well Seasoned, these are in our uh, freezer. And basically, it is everything you need uh, for a glass of sangria except the wine. So this is a popsicle that you drop into your wine glass. Uh, we're enjoying some delicious uh, New Directions rosé. And I just pour the rosé over, and then you just stir this popsicle, and this dissolves into your um, this is into too your wine. For me. I'm, I'm just. I'm Do you want me to mix it for you? <laughs> and now you have a perfect glass of sangria. Is it though? Let me be the judge. You're gonna poke your eye out with that stick. Stop being a kebab before. It's all about <laughs> skips today. So I know today's <laughs> about food on sticks, so yeah. that's why I brought out the sangria. This is a problem, drink on right? a stick. What do I do with this now? Now I put it in my pocket. Yeah, I walk just around. Put it in your pockets. There you go. <laughs> Poor kitchen practices. <laughs> You've never seen Larry David on going on a kebabophobes and no. Oh, you should watch that. He he pokes a Ben Stiller right in the eye with a kebab stick because he had no place to put <laughs> to it. To put it. He just turns and it just it literally goes in and. The, the, you've seen it? I just watched it the other week again. I can't get enough of Larry David. Oh, oh sorry. Let's cheers. Taste it. Cheers. Happy sangria. Happy um, Thursday. So hopefully you guys have poured yourself a glass of wine. I feel like this is a bit of a gong show oh, at the you, moment. No, it's not. No, I mean just me. I feel a little disorientated right now. It's been a day. Yeah, it's been it's been. Um, so thanks to you. Thanks for your support. Thanks for uh, our picnic baskets. Our uh, meal kits. Meal kits. Uh, Father's, Father's Day. Day. We have a weekly meal, so you can t treat your daddy. Um, that uh, that has really really keeping us busy. Uh, the rules are loosey goosey now, so we can get <laughs> together. So the catering exploded. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, the catering is really an interesting animal. We've had quite a few calls. But the really interesting thing is, I'm not sure we can take the work. We don't have enough staff. And I've been trying to hire people, and really? it's just not. Oh, my music to my ears. I didn't yeah. know about this. Uh, Are you hiring? We, well, we're hiring serving staff. Uh. Yeah. So um, anyhow, <laughs> the catering is going to be an interesting thing this summer, I think, for us and for a lot of our friends in the restaurant industry. You know what? It's good. It is, uh, we haven't worked hard in the longest time. Um, what? As in catering. <laughs> uh, what? Like normally this, okay, so, so you, you experienced today, right? Uh -huh. This would be my normal pace every single day when things are fully going on. Okay, maybe you haven't worked hard lately, but I have been working hard. I don't know. Anyhow, it's, uh, yeah. The restaurant industry feels like it's in a bit of a, um, I don't want to say you know, chaos, but it's, uh, everybody's trying to ramp up at the same time. So it's really interesting. It'll take everybody a little while to find their feet. So if you're going out to, to your favorite restaurants that you maybe haven't had a chance to go to in a long time, give them some slack. 
They're probably short-staffed. Everybody's trying to get back into the routine. So well, the, the chaos is going to happen. But, but yeah. the good thing is restaurants are quite used to that. Chaos, yeah. Yeah, you just open the door and sit down 40 people at a time. What, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, just, it just turns into a... Uh, uh, zoo very very fast. I mean it shouldn't but it just does and then all the so they, they're adaptable I have faith in them um, but I say not hard-working we, we were not f running on full full scale like there are sure days that you're super super busy but we could use some exercise especially me I have the COVID baby fat <laughs> since 1977 <laughs> um, but, but yeah thanks to you thanks for your support I try to be patient uh, with the restaurant staff. If you can afford to tip a little bit more, please do. If not, not a big deal. Come in and eat your food. We'll still love you. <laughs> uh, we do, though. I mean... I know. I mean, we, we will talk bad things about you in the kitchen for that next five minutes. Bad being that, like, did, like seriously? like Not in this kitchen. Not in this kitchen. No, no. no. In, in any restaurant Nobody kitchen. Nobody tips us. Yeah. What's I have a tip, tip for you. <laughs> I have a good tip for you. No, I'm kidding. Uh, anyhow, what are we making tonight? We're cooking things What's on all sticks. About, now we're starting a new series called... Uh, grillin'. Summer grillin'. Summer grillin'. And uh, there's not a whole lot. I don't want to use a whole lot of oven. I don't want to use a whole lot of stove. We don't need hearty stew, deep, rich gravies. I will show you what, uh, in a few of these series what I like to eat for summer. Everything is prepared in minutes. Everything is cooked in minutes. Everything is... Uh, all this food can be eaten um, room temperature, so you don't have to sit down and go through a heavy meal. Um, so we are going to make series, but today's is the skewers. I, everybody loves skewers, right? Everybody loves everybody something loves, on a stick. I, I like, yeah, any, anything uh, on a skewer, we're, we're all suckers for it. How do you feel about a corn dog? I think I had one in 1985. <laughs> one corn dog in one your corn life? One in my life, yeah. Did you like it? I didn't care for it. I didn't go back, so I don't hmm. think so. Okay, maybe we'll make corn dogs here. Corn dogs and blooming onions or something. <laughs> sure. We'll do a, a shout out to Fair Food or something. Maybe sure, we'll, yeah, yeah. We'll, I'm down for a corn we'll dog. Fry I've, never, some I've stuff. never made it, uh, but I, I'm ready. I, I, I'd, be, I'd love to do it. So, and where you come from, the food on sticks is typically meat, right? So, you do lots of. Kebabs. It's not even meat. Kebabs are cons like chicken and fish kebabs are considered for vegetarians. They don't even count. <laughs> it's either like lamb or beef, or for children. You know, this, if if you like, especially as a male, kind of, kind of sounds sexist, but but especially as a male, you go into a restaurant and order a chicken kebab, they'll look funny at you. They're like, "Come on, man! Like, that's for the family. You, know, you got to have some lamb or beef. <laughs> lamb, most likely. Uh, but it is, yeah. It's, kebab uh, refers to." Um, Kebab refers to anything on a stick. It does, doesn't it? I guess. I mean, it does. Like in in the in the native. Uh, yeah, that would be a corn dog. dog. That'd be a kebab. No, no, that's a North American. <laughs> I mean, you guys put pineapple on a skewer and I call it a fruit kebab. Back in the world, there we were just like, what? What? Back happened? in the world. In what world? Uh, this was a fruit kebab. A sangria kebab we put this in the wine. This is going to be a weird. I'll, I'll, I'll end up being a kebabophobe after this kebab episode. Yeah. Someone's <laughs> going to lose an eye. <laughs> Please, I need, I, I need my two eyes until next Wednesday. After that, I don't, I don't wish. <laughs> so kebabs are interesting because you can use metal skewers, obviously. You can use wooden skewers, which is probably most typical. I have uh, metal skewers at home that I really liked because the metal skewers, they conduct the heat. Um, that goes inside the meat. So the meat That's cooks uh, quite a lot faster with a metal skewer. And if you are at a serious kebab restaurant, I love the kebab restaurants that do the, um, like the Iranian style, you know, yeah. with the long metal kebabs. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the whole area just mostly cooks the same food. Yeah, I um, love it. Go to your Middle Eastern uh, store, like a l rather large one, and ask for skewers. They have it in the back, in a, like a really sketchy container. Like, 10 of them is like five bucks. You're like, how is that possible? This is made And they come event. out with your skewers. Is this what you want? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, buy the thick ones. Thick ones are excellent for, like, ground meat because it has a larger surface. Um, now, I have some kebabs today. I use a skinny because with that, you always have the chance of uh, falling apart. So the thick ones are better for ground meat. And then have uh, metal ones, um, thin ones just for chicken, yakitori, and whatnot. Wood is great. 
but it's a waste. Well, and they can burn up too. So if you don't soak yeah. them properly, and they and if you're not, yeah. if you lose control of your fire, the on the barbecue, which <laughs> happens easily, um, it does. I I see it a lot. I've barbecued a lot, and I see a lot of people with you know things burning that shouldn't be burning. Mostly my dad. That's all right. Mostly my dad. That's not a lot. That. That's just that's just um, bad. <laughs> so the metal skewers are nice to have, and you always have them. So it's like you know you're. When you go to make your kebabs, you, you're not out of the, the wooden skewers. You've always got the metal skewers. So it's a good investment, and they're really inexpensive. I think we sell 10 or 12 of them for around 5 or $6. We sell them here? Yep, the metal skewers. Oh, I should buy some. And they're, so they're really inexpensive, and then you always have them. They just go in the dishwasher. And so in the Middle East, or in Turkey, rather, where you came from, uh, is veggie skewers a thing, or is it always meat? Just meat. Okay. The only time vegetable touches a skewer is the eggplant kebab. Um, or, uh, so, so uh, we, uh, our garnish is Roma tomatoes, like Roma style tomatoes, our variety, and chilies, long chilies. They get skewered and just they get cooked over charcoal. Just charred, right? Just charred. That's just a very typical garnish. Just go on like any Turkish Instagram account with a kebab, you will see that garnish is uh, uh, charred chilies and charred tomatoes. And then the other exception is the uh, eggplant kebab which they take Japanese style eggplants and uh, put a eggplant slice and a patio kebab, eggplant slice, patio kebab, and, and that's... What's a patio kebab? Pat, patty of kebab. Oh, patty, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so it's not like long, but it's meat. more, uh, it's, it is, yeah, it is like this and round. Okay, so, so it, the eggplant with the meat, with the eggplant. Exactly, but okay. that's the only time. But other than that, we don't put uh, grill uh, things on it. But that being said, the, this whole thing is not a tradition. We started this behavior just not to burn our hands in the very early ages so that, you know, you just use a stick so you don't, you know, that wasn't pots and pans and this and that. So, so be liberal with it. Like if you're a vegetarian, get some halloumi. Halloumi is incredible. Yeah. Paneer, uh, tofu, tempeh. I mean, if meat is not your thing. But are you a saucer? Because I see, well, you just mentioned yakitori, and yakitori has a sauce. No, so, we, Turkish cuisine is dry. We right, it is dry. Yeah. So here, people tend to barbecue. They, like, marinate their meat in barbecue sauce, which is a terrible idea to begin with, because barbecue sauce is just full of sugar, and it catches fire, and then you've got a whole situation going on. But um, if you're going to use a sauce on your meat, I mean, you can use a marinade for sure. You can use an oil, citrus-based kind of marinade on your meat, but I would strongly recommend against using a barbecue sauce as a marinade. But you can use any sauce you like as a base, like you would with yakitori. Absolutely. Also, another rule of thumb is your equipment. Now, tonight, we're not going to, I'm not going to light charcoal in here. And I have these wonderful grill grate pans. If you don't have one, please buy a Lodge, and the Lodge brand, please, because they're the best. And uh, this will last your lifetime, and it's incredible. But what you cannot do with this is cook a piece of meat or veg in a wet marinade. Right. Because it starts stewing, and it just got caramelized, and it's going to burn. You're going to do four sticks, take this into the dishwasher, scrub it, come back. So it'll be, it'll be, um, let's say you're doing chicken wings. If you're doing chicken wings on this, then you only want salt, pepper, and oil. But if you're using a grill, like an outdoor grill, so that can drip then, and yeah, then it yeah, can drip exactly. down. But the drip down is what causes the flare-ups. So if you're using, I know the I know the formula to that. <laughs> oh really? What's you your want? formula? Yeah. Buy a Weber barbecue. I have never had any flare-up in any Weber barbecue I've ever owned. So uh, if you use an oil-based marinade and you don't drain your kebabs properly when you put it on the grill, you're going to get flare-ups. So I would recommend that you keep just for your own personal peace of mind and safety, a little spray bottle of water by the grill. And that way, if you get a little flare up, you, it's easy just to extinguish the flare, out with, flare up with a splash of water. Putting water on top of a burning flame? No, on the, on the flame, underneath the meat. Yeah, it totally works. And, um, just don't do it with a burning pan or burning fat. It's just, just, not just, inside just, the just, house. Yeah, don't outside. do that inside the So if inside the end of your house. skewer catches on fire, you can spritz it to put out the fire. But yeah. um, if you're saucing your meat, like if you're making a chicken kebab or something, you should have your sauce on the side and use a, probably a silicone basting brush to baste um, your sauce, especially if you're using a high sugar sauce like a teriyaki or something similar like that. And but, I also love yakitori. Yakitori is, I think, 
kick ass. Japanese barbecue is like such a fun thing to eat. It is. And uh, have you ever been to a yakitori restaurant? For sure, yeah. yeah. So so you just sit there and just keep on eating. Just keep on crossing. You know, you're just like, hey, I want this and this and it's that. It's like dim sum. Yeah, it just and you just, just order a bottle of sake it. and another one. And now you just keep eating, I don't know, 20 or 30 sticks. Because they're super light, too. But like, they're little, they're little sticks. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love those whole leeks in there, whole mm -hmm. spring onions and this and that. I think it's a fun thing to eat. Um, but okay. um, I will show you in, uh, like, it's, I, I can't call this Southeast Asian, but just like a little, because uh, uh, Asian uh, cultures use lemongrass as a skewer, which I love. Uh, you could use rosemary. You could use... Um, there's lots of things you there's, can there's use. There's a lot of that has a lot cane. of aroma. Yeah, sugar cane, that aroma that just like actually imparts a lot of flavor during grilling. So this recipe to me feels kind of like a West Coast fusion kind of idea. There's lots of components in it that are sort of have a bit of an Asian feel, but um, you know the West Coast. I don't know. It's West sort Coast of, is all about that. Yeah. It's not like you have to be respectful of tradition. You have to just not overdo it, for sure. But at the same time. I have wide variety of East Indian products, uh, it's whole East Asia products, and, and, and readily available, and they're of actually excellent quality. So it's we, we because we live here, and so you yeah. can walk literally from here. You can go to uh, South Asian market, you can go to um, uh, TNT market, which is Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, all of it, I think, is available there. There's a really great Korean supermarket here. Not so much Japanese, so, but yeah. There's, yeah, so you can, you know, literally, we have everything available to us all the time. We're a blessed uh, coast. So the thing about cooking on skewers for me is just being really organized. So if you're having a dinner party, which we can do now, yay for that, yeah. um, then you can have all your pieces ready. You can make your skewers in advance. And I do everything from, literally, I'll skewer the those new potatoes. Oh, my God. Those you skewered potatoes? For sure. The warba potatoes right now are so sweet and so good. So if you just parboil them, yeah. oh, uh, parboil. you have to oh, parboil yeah, yeah, yeah. them. Not... And then you skewer them. I like them with some onion and stuff on there. And they nice. get nice and charred. Okay. I do a little bit of your kind of garlic oil kind of marinade or sort of basting sauce for it. Um, so you can make all of these skewers well ahead of your company arriving. And then you can enjoy a glass of sangria with your company. And if you're me, you can get David to do all the skewers on the grill. Because uh, <laughs> men need a job. But let's you face it, I'm job. having another right, glass right. of sangria. So if uh, I do all the prep, this he's going to This is delicious, by the way. Well good. done. Well yeah. done. So anyhow, if you have questions about tonight's uh, recipes or just about skewers or Dennis, whatever, just uh, ask them in the comment bar. Jen has posted the recipes already, so you can follow along. The recipes in this video will live here on Facebook and on our website. Um, so do you want me to top that up yeah, before I leave? Yeah, top that up, please. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, two of the other guests are not drinking, so I have to finish this bottle. Always going to turn Way into to vinegar. Way to take one for the team. So like Anything I said, if you have you. questions, just uh, pop them into the comments, and um, let's get cooking. All right. That was a long intro. That was a lot. Uh, was that was a lot. Kebabs are chatty. very interesting. I think she's lightheaded. Yeah, from my half a glass of sangria. <laughs> no, from overworking. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that. Okay, so um, the first one is uh, we are going to take uh, our prawns. I'm excited to heat up my grill grate. Again, just if you don't have one of these, buy one of these. They're awesome. They, they work like a charm. You just got to take care of it really, really a little bit and um, whatnot. We are going to serve you um, prawns on lemongrass skewers with a uh, crushed cucumber salad. I'm going to show you how to crush a cucumber and break their heart. <laughs> and, uh, and then we are going to, we, we have another beef kebab later on, but uh, let's start with the marinade. So for the marinade, I have he, what I have here, so I just need a little bowl. Oh man! Okay, uh, let's not turn. Let's turn this down a little bit. It's smoking hot is good, especially when you're cooking fast cooking items. So, I have my uh, prawn skewered on lemongrass stalks. These are the outer membrane of the lemongrass stalks. Also, cut them into little spears and put it in your freezer, so you don't have to lose your mind while you skewer them because they get soft. It's very simple. That's a little veg of lemongrass. Go through the prawn. Again, you can go back to back if, if, there, if you have a guest that has obsessive compulsive disorder. 
just to uh, <laughs> give them that job. Yeah. No, no, or, or like just put them back to back so they're not in, in, they're not in line. So that it messes with them, David would lose it. David would not be happy with that situation. Since you said that, yeah, this is David's. <laughs> uh, it uh, is, there you go, sir. <laughs> that is one messed up kebab. <laughs> That's a kebab you should be afraid of. Um, so it's, it's very easy, literally, as long as it's frozen. To this, I am going to add my uh, chopped uh, lime leaves. And I took the tender part of the pro uh, lemongrass and I sliced it into... Uh, and I slice it thinly. Uh, ginger, garlic, lime leaves, lemongrass goes on there. So, hey, chef. Um, Elvis just asked if um, Elvis is in the house, by the way. Um, he just asked if we could do a class on uh, marinades and how to use them. So, I think that's a great idea. Marinade sauces for summer grilling. That could be Absolutely. part of our series. Yeah. Absolutely. I have some kick ass rubs uh, that I would like to show you because. People, when they make rubs, they're quite loose with it. You know, they're like... Uh, I'm it excited always, for this situation. No, it's, it's always... They always cook like Bobby Flay, you know. Little, just the brown sugar, paprika. Like the salt by whatever his name is. Yeah, salt by... Well, at least... He, that guy's Turkish. So, so Elvis, let's salt. Elvis, we will definitely include that as one of our classes in this sure. series. Sure. Marinas, mar marinades. I'll show you my favorites and a couple of rubs that are killer. Uh, my prawns are being marinated. One of my favorite activities, I put it on the menu so I can do it, is to crush a cucumber. You can talk them down first if you want, if you're into that kind of thing. But, uh, Before you break their souls. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not worthy. I'm not going to cut you into pretty cubes. You're not worthy. <laughs> uh, you just take something heavy and crush it. Oh. Uh, I know this sounds disrespectful to, f disrespectful to food, but it actually, what it does is it creates this wonderful smashed ridges that can hold on and suck up a lot of sauce. It's actually a very useful uh, way of uh, marinating cucumber. Then for that uh, guest that has the obs obsessive compulsive disorder, cut it into the, the randomest chunks. <laughs> so that they, 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 have a, uh, they, they see you in their dream that night. Again, yeah, there is no uh, form to it. It's just uh, wonderfully coarse. Uh, this is a very common way of making a cucumber salad in the uh, Eastern Asian restaurants. And uh, I, I, I figured this one out uh, from Peaceful Noodle House and watched a video of Gordon Ramsay crushing a cucumber actually two weeks ago. So I wouldn't take your heavy saucepan to a field cucumber. <laughs> There's a lot of water in those guys. I'd stick with the... Uh, um, Persian variety. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you want a, a cucumber bath. <laughs> Pinch of salt on the cucumber. Now, this is going to... Uh, let's put this in our little cup here for a second. Now, to this bowl... I'm going to add some fish sauce. This is the red boat variety. Sliced serranos. This is one of my favorite uh, dressings to make. Um, to this, I'm going to add white sugar. To this, I am going to add uh, zest and juice of two limes. Any questions yet, Angie? Uh, well, Jack is unexpected. I'm not sure what he thinks is unexpected. You beating the hell out of a cucumber with a pot or... Uh um, yeah, we've got Elvis and Jack Nicholson in the house tonight. Oh, this man. Is like Jeez. Our, uh, our friends are showing up, which is, which is good news. It's excellent news. Both zest and lime. Zest and lime. Uh, congrats on your daughter's wedding, by the way. I wish I could be there to cook it, but... <laughs> but he's got me cooking it instead. Yeah. Father's Day uh, is... Uh, uh, keeping us busy. My father is dead, so I might as well work it. That oh was gosh. dark. <laughs> oh. It's, a, it's okay, I'm over it. Uh, lime juice. Yes, Jack says, it was unexpected that you spanked that cucumber with a pot. Well, Jack, stick around. Jack, I've been bad. No, I think that cucumber was bad. I don't know, either, either or. <laughs> anyway... So, again, here what I have is lime zest, sugar, jalap, uh, serranos, 
you can use a Thai uh, bird's eye chili, either or. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to whisk this. Chef Veronica is asking if you can replace lemon for vinegar if you don't have lemon. Uh, yes, you can. Absolutely. But this is such a fresh, this fresh citrus is, is kind of important in this. So lime, orange, would they be interchangeable here? Uh, uh, orange is good, but orange is a bit too sweet. So I would, ooh, oh man, that says, calls my name. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I hope you like spice. Uh, Chef Elvis wants to know if you should uh, make the sauce the night before and allow the I would make this and I would make it uh, a liter at a time and have it in my fridge all the time. This but is a great But the marriage. question is, should you soak your prawns overnight? And that would be you a hard cannot. no. No, 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 no. That's no, a hard no. No. Uh, shellfish with acid or, or, or anything, it, it just... Uh, it'll cook. It'll like cook. It'll, especially a prolonged acid sitting time on shellfish or any fish is going to stiffen up and get rid of most of the moisture and it's going to an unpleasant rubbery texture and you just don't yeah. do that. Uh, shellfish is about succulence, sweetness, snap, good quality. It's all about those things. Uh, my cucumbers going. So Elvis, make the sauce well in advance, but just soak the prawns, like do it. Um, just maybe 10 minutes ahead of time. Yeah. They are very delicate. They don't need heavy marination. But this sauce, this marinade would work really well with other, th other fish, other chicken. Chicken. Uh, halibut, pork, chunks. halibut, scallops, anything. Any whitish lean and, uh, and, and mild meat. Um, daikon goes in here. Then I'm going to toss and marinate my vegetables. And I'll show you a secret tonight, a pro, t pro move. Um, how to maximize all of your sauces. Now, I'm going to let my cucumbers marinate for a minute here. Now, let's see if our pan is hot. Our pan is hot. Let's get it really, really hot. Um, yeah, oil your grate, and let's just have a go at it. This is going to cook in about a minute and a half each side. This is David's messed up one. <laughs> oh, man. It's going to get smoky in here, just so you guys know. Is the fan on, Chef? Uh, it would bother the microphone, and I like to smoke when I drink, so... Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's Johnny Carson when you need him? <laughs> Why do you need Johnny Carson? We are smoking when you drink. Didn't he used to smoke and drink on The Tonight Show? Everybody used to smoke and drink everywhere in the <laughs> 1960s and 50s. Nobody cared. Uh, let's just turn this down a little bit. Again, what I'm looking at is... Just a nice pink hue and a warm, true, good quality shellfish. That's, that's all you're after. Uh, because good quality shellfish does not need to be hot, excessively cooked, seized up, or, or any of those qualities. I'm, I'm keeping also my grill grate rather dry because I don't want them to fry. Also, excessive oil is going to burn and make this whole thing weird and bitter and sm smelly. What I'm looking at is that dry char. So it gives that really smoky flavor. And that's very, very, very important. If you have excess amount of oil in, in here, or just like Angie said, excess amount of uh, oily marinade, then what you're going to end up is uh, it'll probably catch on fire. Uh, the oil is going to smoke, and it's going to be unpleasant. And, uh, and when you're grilling... The fire department hasn't been here in weeks, so, you know. Only weeks? Yep. I might not. Oh, uh, I'll fix that. We'll have Dave here over here tomorrow. Uh, what I'm looking at, uh, whenever you grill and you're caramelizing something, especially a quick cooking item like this, that's a minute and a half probably. I'm going to grab this and I'm going to turn this around. Okay, so if you're my dad right now, you would have flipped those things 80 times by now. So the idea here is to let the pan or your grill do its work. Let it do its job. Don't try and pry them off the grill. If they're no. not ready to flip, leave them there. Don't, don't try and like rip them from the grill. So, so here's what happens. Um, meat, any kind of meat, especially fish or shellfish like this, have a lot of moisture. 
Now moisture and excess of hot, hot surfaces uh, tend to create a suction and uh, stick. So um, with your meats, especially with fish, put it on your grill, make sure that your fish is quite dry and your uh, um, grate is well oiled. As the protein cooks and coagulates, it will start to pull itself off the grill anyway. So if you're patient enough, ju just, just, just be patient. You don't need a whole lot of uh, movement or um, caramelization on this. Um, if you're cooking with a hot grill, the, the ticket here is a hot grill, whether it's your indoor grill or your barbecue. If your grill is hot, it will sear up the meat properly and the meat will release. If you cook cold food on a cold grill, you're going to stick every single time. Hot, excessive hot grill and wet food also creates a suction effect. Yes. Just so you know. Yes. Uh, that it's, I mean, it's, the idea is the culprit is not the grill. It has to be hot, but the culprit is a wet protein. As soon as you put it, if it's too hot and the protein is wet, it'll and, suck and it up. And also, if the protein is too cold, so if you take the protein immediately out of the refrigerator, and put it on a hot grill. It's just like yeah. you going from, you know, your house, like your uh, house to the hot tub. You kind of like, ooh, sort of seize up a little bit. Especially lean protein will seize up, and you yeah. will see those little curls of the butterfly prawn, or just like seize up, looking like, what is going on here? So if right. you can bring your kebabs or whatever you're cooking, whether it's a burger or a steak, close to um, closer to room temperature than refrigerated temperature. That's a great way to start on the grill. Absolutely, absolutely. I do agree with you. I think this is these are clean plates. Wow, it's like a Christmas miracle. We agree on something. There are parts that I didn't agree, but I'm too tired to just like have an argument oh. with Angie right oh, now. Oh, uh, bring it. I'm sure I'll hear all about it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna get on uh, Google and uh, leave a horrible review on, uh, <laughs> on our live segment. Uh. They had to put my mask on. Come. <laughs> Um, anyway, so these prawns are done, okay, uh, let's just bail these out. I mean, it smells great. It's hot, it's still very succulent, it's not seized up, um, but it's also cooked through. I think it's a little suspicious that Nikki's still here. i um, pretty sure Nikki's looking for dinner, but, you know. Nikki, are you hungry? <laughs> you guys are like bad relatives. They keep showing up. <laughs> <laughs> well, except we actually pay these relatives to come to work. However, I am trained and you're eating only one skewer then. So, um, our prawns is done. Wow. Our, the, our prawns are done. And now we've all had a sauna. Thank you for that. Yeah. That is, uh, Elvis asked if we had the fire department on hold. I assured him that the fire department was on hold every Thursday night. Elvis is on to you. I like the fact that you're uh, saying things, Elvis. It keeps the conversation going, you know. It's, it's, it's <laughs> awesome. So, our marinated cucumbers and uh, daikon. I am going to strain this. And you know what I'm going to do with the strainer? Strain thing? What? It's going to be our dipping sauce. Oh, my God. Bam! <laughs> oh. There's a pro tip for you that you can uh, utilize flavor. I'm not going to uh, waste this marinade. It has the daikon and the chilies and all to it. So you But know this I mean? marinade also only had vegetables in it. If you're using a marinade for meat, you have to discard the marinade or cook it, obviously. Exactly. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, like just don't do that. Food yeah. safe. Um, here safe. I add uh, big cilantro sprigs. Because we gotta have the big salad. And then I'm tossing it around. Check for seasoning. Hmm. My God, never gets old. That's good. And this is our little dippy dippy sauce. Uh, this is a nice light dip. Just a heads up. It's quite spicy, actually. Just a heads up. And. Um, you know, in North America, we're very used to uh, mayo-based dips and all that texture, but uh, light and flavorsome is a skill which you should acquire. I'm going to use the tiniest spoons to plate, so it takes about five hours. 
Just a little prawn skewer. Chef, can you move that olive oil out of the way so they can see your dish? Thank you. Actually, let's just put this here. How about that? As you can see, we don't tweeze around in this kitchen. Oh my gosh, I saw somebody the other day use tweezers to put a piece of mint on the most ridiculous thing and I was like, oh, <laughs> what is happening right now? The tweezers are fine, but we, all, we used to do those tricks with chopsticks when I was in culinary school. I mean, it was such a stupid dish, I forget what it was, but I was like, really, tweezers? Uh, I mean, I have, well, I have tweezers, but like culinary tweezers, but I mean, Come on. <laughs> uh, there is nothing called culinary tweezers. There's for plucking eyebrows, and they should stay in the... There actually is culinary tweezers. They're made by um, Cuisinart or Henkel, and they're actually... <laughs> Just because somebody calls something a name doesn't make it real, you know. Uh, anyway, why don't you come and taste the dish, Angie? Um, Heather wants to know, since you have um, crushed the um, cucumber and then tossed it around, if you have some unresolved anger issues... <laughs> Uh, my over. mother never loved me. <laughs> that is not true. Do not <laughs> I'm, I'm, make me call her. I'm kidding. I had the happiest childhood. That is not true. I had the happiest childhood. Here, sorry. Give me a sec. I forgot about this part. Uh -oh. Here's a little lime veg. Just to finish your finish I have to, acidity. I have to squeeze it myself. Uh, does it uh, go on the prawns or on the <laughs> everything? I don't know. We'll put it on everything. I forgot yeah. my fork. <laughs> um, Let me I'm just go. your mom. You just wait. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I love this salad. Isn't it delicious, though? Mm -hmm. We eat it here regularly. Yeah. I, I cook it a lot for staff meals. and. We eat a version of this salad regularly. The spice in here is the serrano. Is serrano right? chili is just releasing their... Uh, uh, spice into the mix is, is what it is. Isn't it delicious? It's summery, it's light. You can eat this, have half a bottle of wine, hang around, and then in about. Huh? It's spicy. It is very spicy. I mean, don't mess around. Mm. You know what this would. This reminds me of Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. This, these flavors in Vietnam, when David and I were there two years ago, they would have served this whole dish on top of the rice noodles. Yeah. Cold, and then you dump this sauce over top of it, and that's how you eat it. I haven't been, but I mean, yeah, I, I've, uh, I've seen it. This is exactly, and David will be able to probably confirm that it reminds him of that, yeah, that sure. trip for sure. But the, the heat, excuse me, the heat kind of makes you sweat, which kind of cools you off when it's hot I'm out. I'm not with that argument. <laughs> I am not with that <laughs> argument. It's a hot food, no, what do they say, hot soup? It's good for in the winter. I'm no summer. I'm like no man. No, I just. I'm like a chubby white girl in Vietnam. I was dying the entire time. I could not get enough cold beer. I was like just wasted constantly. the whole time. <laughs> I was sweating like 24/7. But these flavors exactly remind me of Amazing. Vietnam. And I can taste the lemongrass a little bit, but it's not strong. There's no lemongrass in the sauce, right? Ah, uh, there is no lemongrass in the sauce. Yeah. There's a little bit in the marinade. But the cucumber salad is really nice and spicy, and uh, obviously you can tone that heat back yourself. No, nope. by you can do that by reducing do that. the amount of chilies in your in your. And sauce. also with your fresh chilies, um, don't rely on recipes with your fresh chilies because fresh chilies spiciness. Is different. Yeah, exactly. Very. Cut it in half. Put your dab your finger and put it on your tongue a little bit. It will give you the idea of because. Um, They're all different. Yeah, six out of ten jalapenos are... Like a green pepper? Not like a green pepper, but they're mildly spicy. Then you have two of them, that is just scorches the hell out of you. Yeah. Or, or just go to a consistent chili or use a habanero or a bird's eye chili. That is spicy and you know what you're getting into and so you can adjust it. Yeah, it's delicious. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, it's really good. Glad you liked it. Now, this one. Um, oh, there's my meat. So this one is a kebab. It's a dear to my heart. Uh, I grew up in a kebab in the name of like a re real kebab. Uh, I grew up with it. I have the most fond memories in kebab restaurant. It's my favorite food to eat at a restaurant when I'm in Turkey. Uh, there is a whole ceremony to it. 
And uh, excuse me for a second. A ceremony to the like bringing the kebab to the table or the no cooking? no it's it's no it's not it's not about that it's about uh, so you just arrive uh, you have your cold dips and a fresh bread after that you have your hot apps uh, like kibe like uh, lahmacun and gaburda uh, uh, with pomegranate molasses a bunch of them then they bring you a little meat course like a uh, grilled skewer of a liver on charcoal with uh, sumac and parsley and onions. Um, so, so there's a whole routine to the uh, table and, and I just love that. And you have your kebab family style with certain accompaniments like the bulgur rice and the yogurt and all that jazz. And then you end up with kunafa or baklava or whatever the house specialty is. So this is, this is one bread. of my- hmm? Don't forget the bread. Pita bread? The, yeah, the flatbread yeah. always comes. Oh, it, they, they just always replenish it. Yeah. Uh, and it's always cooked to order. Normally this would be lamb, but today we're making beef to be a little bit more friendly. To me. To uh, Angie. This is a wonderful piece. Also, don't buy too compact meat for this. Uh, that's already been there. Uh, fluffy ground beef. As you can see, I can just uh, spread this into little threads. So that's, where, that's, that's a good part of it. That, gives you a lot of texture. And then I'm gonna take uh, cumin powder, coriander powder, and uh, salt and chili flakes, and one clove of garlic that's been minced. Fresh garlic. Fresh garlic, that is. Yeah, we don't use, uh, I, I've, I've never seen powdered garlic uh, before, I, uh, before I came here. And then, your hands are your best tools. Normally, we would take, normally this would be done with a big uh, cleaver kind of device. What do they call those big pizza? A mezzaluna, we call mezzaluna. it Mezzaluna, okay. Yeah. With a mezzaluna, and this would be cut to a certain texture. But there, there's nothing wrong with nice and fluffy ground beef. Now, what I would like you to do is uh, toss this around. Now, when you want to make this kebab mix, always make it ahead of time. I would say it's at least a day ahead of time, and do not skewer it, but let the whole meat marinate with all of the um, all of the spices, right? It's just uh, so you have a big mass of meat with a big mass of spices, uh, and uh, everything amalgamates overnight, which is very very important. Then, so you, uh, sorry, chef, your recipe calls for is it one pound of meat to that spice mix? Not to that spice mix. This is the uh, shortened version of it. Okay. But I made the other ones ahead of time, so we have flavors some right, stuff. Right, but your recipe is um, that we've posted. Is it one pound of meat? I think okay. that so you can. It's easy to double or triple this if yeah, you're yeah, making. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but but don't freeze this. Right. Just don't. It's just uh, it's better fresh. It is better fresh. It it is better fresh. Um, you will have one meat handling. Uh, hand and then the other will be the forming hand also grab your meat and slap it this will condense the structure of the uh, ground beef rather than crushing and mushing it like a sausage we're not after a sausage consistency we're after a uh, somewhat of a tender bit like a between a sausage and a burger consistency okay this compacts you can do this in your hand Okay, rather than me putting this through a uh, machine that is going to just really, really make the whole thing sausage, we just do short hits of this. Hope I don't miss. Cause I know. <laughs> Which is another way of us. Uh, uh, should we do it? No. Uh, no, when the kebab is ready, you just take a chunk. And then. Oh God. You just throw it at the window. If it sticks. That's good texture, which I'm not gonna do today because that's waste of food and it's awful. It's like the old wives' tale that that's how you decided when spaghetti was ready. You threw it against the refrigerator. That's for show sure, though. This is a re real thing. Oh, it is, yeah. Um, anyway, so I just grabbed my uh, kebab and my skewer. I dip my hand in a little bit of water so it's a bit easier to skewer this. Obviously, you have to, uh, if you're not into raw meat, you have to cook a little piece to see where your spice and uh, salt level is at. I, I don't mind eating it raw. Mm. Um, because it is very good quality meat that you can eat raw. Anyway, once it sets, 
get this in the fridge to settle at least and at least a um, few hours so the whole thing come, can come together. So let's start this process. It's going to get smoky in here and I can't wait. I cannot wait. Let's crank our uh, heat high. And this is uh, cooked on high heat and high heat only. I told you Nikki would show up. Hi, I think, Nikki. I think it's the only reason she works here, to be honest. Well, come on. I mean, food is one of the reasons why we do this. <laughs> I mean, we love food. Who doesn't? This needs a pinch of salt since I've tasted it. That salad will sneak up on you, Nikki. Ooh, it's sneaking. <laughs> yep. All right. We got hecklers tonight in the crew. <laughs> Um, I, I made some ahead of time so it can harden up. As you can see, this would still just turn and slide, but this is solid. That's what fridge does. So how far ahead can you make these guys? Like a day or two, even? Just a day. Just one day. Just one day. Put it on. Make sure that everything is touching the surface. Let's give it a shot with the fresh one. I don't think this might fall apart. But, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. Let's see how it goes. Again, it's not ideal to do this uh, right, off the, right after you skewer them. Just a heads so up. So why are you pressing them down into the grill? Uh, because they are uh, cold. And uh, they are have a, they're in round shape. Just by pressing them lightly is going to reduce the cooking time. So there's not a whole lot of smoke in the house, as well as more uh, surface for caramelization. Right. More surface. Normally, this would be like a really, really flat kebab. But so today, we're breaking bounds and rules and boundaries. I think because this meat is ground meat, it's even more important now not keep to... Keep on talking. Give me a second. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think it's even more important now not to mess around with the kebabs, just to let them set up on the grill. Because if you uh, start moving them now, you're going to have a terrible situation with ground meat all over the grill. Yes, and you can be quiet now. So, <laughs> um, are you my brother? Like, seriously. No, Nikki showed up. I have to have another piece of bread. <laughs> so, um, this is going on. Again, she is right. The pride and joy oh of... Oh, my God. Twice in one night. Can you say that one more time? What is that? She is right. What is happening What right is up now? with the North American girls and just having like this uh, being right all the time or saying the last word? I, I have no idea. It's very typical here. Very typical. They, they think that they're winning an argument. I'm like just like... Mm. <laughs> what was it? Your face? Your face. Your face. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, Angie was right. She didn't know oh, she was right, on. but she was yeah. right. That uh, the pride and joy of kebab making of is about having the tenderest kebab without falling apart. And for that, it is uh, really, really important to chill it down. And, um, and let it marinate so it kind of like stiffens up. And as it heats, it'll be super, super uh, tender. Now, this goes, we have a little bit of situation here, but uh, let's see if Dave is going to show up. My next <laughs> recipe is one of my favorite things to eat. I actually avoid making this recipe because I can sit and eat like a liter of this and it just feels awful the next day. This is a white bean salad with tahini vinaigrette. Oh my god, thank you for not eating a liter of that. <laughs> um, I, and I will show you just have this recipe. This uh, dressing makes a killer vegan Caesar also, dressing also. This is a sumac, tahini, lemon juice, Sumac is not, but uh, you have the proportions. Equal parts of lemon juice, water, and tahini. That completely depends on how thick your tahini is. Normally, when tahini sits, it will just con um, split and go down. The paste part will be super thick. If it is that, it's equal parts. Uh, just I mix this in a little uh, kitchen gadget, so I'm not breaking my arm. So that goes in. I'm going to whisk this. So I have a nice little base, then I'm going to take my towel, I'm just going to make a little uh, 
thing and I'm just going to tie a little knot here so you have a sturdy base so you don't need assistance while you work. Towel's too tight. Uh huh? The towel's too tight. The towel trick, the good old towel trick. Okay? Now, if you think Hollandaise or Mary is making this temperamental, watch till we want, do you this, wait until you do this one. If this breaks, there is no fix in it. It's garbage, just so you know. So, very, very, very slowly, in a steady stream by constant whisking, we are going to whisk this sauce until it is nice and thick. And this uh, is called emulsification, where uh, sesame seed paste tahini is acting as a binding agent to bind uh, lemon juice. And um, I think we need a little wider gap here. Do you have to do this by hand or can you use a machine, a uh, food processor or? Absolutely, absolutely. You can use a food processor, which makes your life easier uh, 10,000 times. Uh, but just be patient with it, okay? You cannot go fast with this one. Again, if this uh, splits, it's just this garbage. I mean, it's, yeah, it is garbage. Now let's flip our kebabs. Oh man, I'm dripping. What you don't want. What we're looking at is a consistency that coats the back of a spoon. Uh, I put three pita breads uh, in the oven. So have them nice and warm. All right, we can go a little bit faster now. You get the idea. Now, with the magical TV, Santa left me a little present. Again, just uh, just coating the back of the spoon. Not too thick, not too thin. Okay? If it's too thin, it's just going to mess around all over your plate. If it's too thi uh, thick, well, there's nothing wrong with that. So can we talk again about how little you've moved those skewers? Because I think it's like ingrained in people that they have to like turn this stuff a thousand times when they're cooking. The kebabs? Yes. And just, just leave them alone. If you leave them alone, it's less work. Uh, just like my grandmother used to say, just uh, put, it on a, put it on heat, turn it up, and just forget about it. Forget about it. Not Don't forget about it, about it but let it, let it cook itself. Like, you don't have to attend to that thing. Again, when you look at the bean salad, it's not dripping heavily or excessively, and it's got a nice loose consistency. This is one of the best vegan bites that you can ever, ever have. Sorry, it's a delight I know you said what beans you were using, but I missed that part. Those I did are, not actually. That oh. was a good question. Uh, it are, they are navy beans. They're dear to my heart and my favorite. I use them all my career, and I think uh, it is one of the most delicious beans ever out there. So are you a bean soaker or a canned bean guy? I don't use canned beans. I mean, I use canned beans just out of convenience if I have to, but soak your beans and, and cook your beans because that canned taste um, would go away with heat, but classy cooks cook their beans. Do it right. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, That's a chef deism. Chef deism. Classy cooks cook their beans. Jenna, write that down. You should. Yeah. You should actually get that tattoo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jenna's looking for a new tattoo. That I relates don't have to any you. tattoo, and I'm. Uh, as soon as Louis dies, I'm gonna have one arm Isabella and the other arm Louis. Uh, I think I'll call Jenna's mom and let her know she's considering a Chef D tattoo. I'm pretty sure the mom will talk to her. My out mom? Of it. No, Jenna's mom. Oh, Jim. <laughs> All right, these are cooked. So now, once the, how do you know they're cooked? I know you're touching it, but how do you know? Um, you can use a probe. This, uh, in Turkey, we usually eat our kebabs well done. That granular burger kind of 
texture is actually a part of the whole thing. It is, you don't cook a medium kebab, that's not how it goes. Um, because just because it's ground meat, I mean the, uh, the reputable places obviously would use very really good quality of meat, but this is such an item that is available to everybody and everywhere. So if you're having a really sketchy version, you might want to get that well done. But also you're going to potentially let these sit for a little while. So ah. you don't want to have meat that's super rare, ground meat that's rare, because you're going to leave it sitting while you're, you know, I mean, while your guests are kind of grazing. So yeah. you don't want to have super rare this ground is, meat. This is about texture. This is not about a, like uh, uh, pinpoint dumbness. My pita bread is nice and warm. But food safety is still really important. Absolutely. If you don't know the source of your ground meat, and if you didn't grind it yourself, just, and also hard, um, excuse me, um, well done doesn't have to be dry. Like so, sorry, meat, what? Well done meat doesn't have to be dry. Right. Meat turns into well done at 150 Fahrenheit. If you keep it there, it's actually quite succulent and juicy. Now, this is how I like to uh, plate this. I'm just going to have my beans on my bread. Just a nice little portion. Not too much, not too little. Just a spread around the love. This is a very southern eastern Turkish thing to eat. <laughs> Heather wants to know who's buying the sketchy meat. You're right, Heather. Nobody here is buying sketchy Here's meat. Here's the thing. Heather, you're in uh, Alberta. It's oh. a small town. Oh, sorry. Okay? Yeah. And you're staying in the wilderness in this bed and breakfast or whatever it is. And there's one convenience store, and the closest store is in about an hour. You go in there, freezer. Th there is a piece of puck there that's sitting, and you felt like a kebab. Yeah, just cook it well done, please. Just, just, just do it. Do the right thing. Okay? So there are, there are always uh, uh, situations. Um, I don't unscore my meat. They can deal with the score, which is the right thing to do. Uh, not, it's okay, it's not the right thing to do because uh, if you cooked on wooden skewers, you'd get the skewer. If it's metal, because it's hot, they don't want liability, they would just take it off. And to this, I'm going to add cilantro and meat, mint leaves. Because fresh herbs in uh, Middle Eastern cooking is everything. Okay. All right, Angie, let's have you here. Now, to this again, I'm going to have some, just a turkey style, unseasoned chopped tomatoes. This is just going to, everything is very well seasoned. Bang. Um, so that uh, this is going to tone you down. Oh, man. I'm putting it, uh, stuff on the rim. And then, what would life be without pickles? This is one of my favorite ways to, uh, why don't you come over, Angie? All right. One of my favorite things, uh, ways of uh, pickling uh, vegetables. Whatever leftover vegetables you have, you put them in a jar and you make a brine out of um, mild vinegar, such as rice wine vinegar. A little bit of sugar. That's the only time I use sugar, so I don't waste vegetables, uh, so I can preserve them. And, uh, and then, uh, then you have a fridge, uh, pickles in the fridge for good for every occasion. Wait, you don't eat raw, do you eat pickled onions? Houston, we're going back. Um, so you said a minute ago that you don't um, take the meat off the skewer, but if you were in a restaurant in Turkey, would they take the meat off the skewer? If it's metal, yes. Oh, because they don't want people handling it. Or, or, right. or it's, it, well, it's gotta go into the dish, but then reuse for the service. Right. But this, uh, no. So, um, this, I feel like, uh, would, in Turkey, would come with like hummus and other things. Maybe not no? even close. Just by itself, just like huh? this. Yeah, just, just this, like this, this is a dish. People, that is a, just like a kind of like a little Greek interpretation. Yeah, this everything comes with hummus and tzatziki here. That's not the case in uh, Turkey. But in, um, I don't know why. I just think everything hummus. comes with hummus and lebna on the side. Nope, not even cold, close. Well, uh, well, we will have salsa. I, I would like some hummus and Lebanon on the side. Of course, you're North American, that's why. Can I have some ranch? 
Can you get me some ranch dressing? I'm How about dip all this. Mayo? <laughs> I'm going to dip all this in some <laughs> ketchup. I'm going to dip you know this in some also, ranch. Also, life is too short. You do whatever the hell you want to do. Please don't, please don't uh, chef be, be bullied by chefs. You're paying a bill. Nobody cares. If you want things in a certain way, yeah, just eat it in a certain way. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go, go, go to a cr crazy, uh, classy pasta restaurant and ask for extra plum with your seafood pasta. Yeah. Um, they'll be talking about you for mm. a while. I dropped a bean. Ooh. Man down. Um, <laughs> so the beans are still kind of like a little bit, yep, they've got a little bit of bite to them, which is, I mean, they're not mush. You know, you're not looking for like three fried bean situation here. You're looking for some texture it's left It's got to be beans. tender enough to be able to eat. Otherwise, uh, it's not yeah. good for your digestive system. Uh, mushy is acceptable. Not like a, but a refried bean mushy, but like no. soft and tender mushy is acceptable. Yeah. But really al dente, like really, really crunchy stuff is not good for your digestion either. Mm. And, and normally you would just like lift the whole thing up and just... I'll do that later. I know. <laughs> All right. Um, it's good. I love the kebabs. I love that. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if Jenna, if you can zoom in or not, but... There's a good amount of caramelization on the skewer itself. And that caramelization happened because he left it alone. If you had tried to turn this with any meat on the grill or even a grill pan, if you turn it too many times, you're going to lose the caramelization and the meat's just going to, I mean, it'll cook, but it's going to be kind of like, you're not going to get that caramelization that you want that's going to give you those really great flavors. Leave things alone, it's less work. Yeah. And when the pan is done, It'll give you back the food. If it sticks, it's not ready to be turned. When it's Absolutely. ready, it, it will release from the pan. So just, you know, just chill. stand back. Um, so uh, for next week, we'll still love to hear your, all of your suggestions if you'd like to see a certain thing. We don't do it. So don't. next week, let's do the yeah, marinades and sauces because I think that'll set people up for some success for the rest of their barbecue season. So let's talk about marinating some seafood, marinades for uh, vegetables, marinades for kebabs. And marinades can mean a lot of different things. Sure. Things you can freeze ahead. Like when David and I go away, if we're going camping or whatever, I'll freeze sometimes our meat in the marinade and then you can take and it with it you. And use it as an ice pack. Yes. So let's talk about all of these things. And there's some really delicious marinades you can use for fruit. Um, and for all kinds of things that you can kind of plan ahead. So thanks for that idea, Elvis. I think we'll do that next week. Elvis um, rules, man. <laughs> Elvis. Not you, though, the other Elvis. No, all of the Elvises. All rule. of the Elvis. Actually, actually, I was just telling this about three weeks ago. I've never met anybody Elvis. Now you know Elvis. Elvis Holland. Ha <laughs> ha <laughs> So Elvis was here the other day and picking up his donuts, but Elvis will be in this weekend to Can pick up a... Say hi? He'll be in this weekend. To, you probably weren't here because it was the weekend. So Elvis is coming in this weekend to pick up his brownies, I think. So Elvis, stick your head in the kitchen and say and hello to the chef. And I'm working seven days this week. Or 12 days? Or three weeks? Right. <laughs> um, Labor. <laughs> Labor cannibal. Oh, let me, call, let me call HR. Michelle's not here tonight, so <laughs> don't worry about it. So Elvis, um, next when you're here this weekend, stick your head in the kitchen and tell Chef D. Elvis is in the house. We'd love to say hello to you. So thank Hi. you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We'll be back here next Thursday with a special episode on marinades and sauces and all of those delicious things. Thanks for your support. Thanks for being here. Yeah. We love y'all. Yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. It was a small crowd tonight, but it was a good-looking crowd. So thanks for being here. We'll see you right here next Thursday at 530 on Facebook Live. Cheers, everybody. Stay safe.